Welcome to two videos on using I.O. and Interrupt in the QNX operating system presented by Symmetry Innovations, the Australian QNX distributor. We'll be looking at simple I.O. and Interrupt handling. Now I'm told that I.O. and Interrupts are hard work in other operating systems, that these videos will hopefully show the simplicity, elegance and power of QNX in this area. What we'll see are digital outputs, interrupt handling in an application, writing an interrupt handler function, tracing within that function and attaching to real hardware. The hardware setup has been kept as simple as possible. It will use the old parallel port as an output device and for real feedback a speaker is attached to it. Toggling the port will create a relaxing square wave. This is also an excellent way to identify jitter. But what is QNX? It's a real-time and embedded operating system used in automotive, military, aerospace and industrial applications since 1982. Its unique architecture and design make it outstanding in this area. Uh, its IDE, Momentix, is Eclipse based. We will be using this and its kernel logging features during the uh, demonstrations. Let's get some I.O. happening. And we'll make it really simple. We'll toggle the parallel port, wait for a millisecond, then toggle again. So to do this we need in our code, the address of the port, thread control, uh, and what thread control does is gives the application privity and access to I.O. and interrupt systems. It needs to be in included in the initialized code. It's a necessity if you don't want your I.O. outs and I.O. ins to seg seg v. So out 8, port and value will actually output the value to port 8. We then toggle the value and then we'll wait for a millisecond uh, and go around that loop again. So let's compile and run and there's our our wonderful speakers being toggled. Now we were talked about seeing in the IDE. We look at the target navigator we can see all the processes that are running on the box and that's what and there's ours there. We can actually look at process information for that particular process. It's priority 10, it's currently sleeping, etc. The target navigation view also allows us to log kernel events. In QNX everything is done according to events so it's so logging of kernel events su such as that is a very useful idea and extremely powerful. So timeline we'll go down and we'll look at there's our kernel. We'll have a look at our process itself. Zoom in. Zoom in on one of the events and there's our process taking up CPU and its various states. <coughs> If we look at the actual events themselves, we see that there's our process running. Uh, if we look at the actual interrupt itself, it started there at 48 microseconds, 56 microseconds, it, at 56 it uh, executed. And we saw our timer, timeout enter, timer, timeout exit, our thread went back to sleep. So. Uh, There we are there, there's the entry, and if we go back to look at our log. So from that point there to here, it took 8.3 microseconds before we started executing our code from receipt of interrupt. Then our code took 7.8 microseconds to run. Our code in this case, oh let's get rid of that noise. Our code in this case is subject to it's an application, so it's subject to scheduling, priorities, etc. If our jittery, if we jitter too much, for as we might be seeing happening there, yep, something has preempted us here. This has been, and this process has been put into ready state, which means that our one so-called uh, our uh, time delay will suddenly be increased by um, by the delay in here. If we want more accurate timing, what do we do? Well, 
One option is to attach to an interrupt and have the application woken up or unblocked when the interrupt fires. For our purposes we can use a timer based interrupt zero. This is provided by the kernel and fires every tick or millisecond, which is very useful. Also, since everything is happening at the application level, uh, we can use the standard debugging tools, also very useful. So, we create a SIG event structure, which will be the mechanism the OS will use to unblock us, and we tell the OS that we want the event and interrupt linked. Uh, with the attach event function, which we give the IRQ and the event. This will link the two. We then need to block in our main loop, calling the interrupt wait function. When the interrupt happens, the kernel will mask the interrupt off and will uh, release us for execution. Since the interrupt is masked off, we need to unmask it at some stage if we ever wish to receive a second one. So, let's compile and run. And we hear the nice noise which we can then monitor by logging. You may, if you're quick enough, have heard slight... Let's get rid of the sound. And pull up the trace. You may, if you're quick enough, have heard little jumps and splutters in the tone. The reason for that is that we're at application level and therefore subject to scheduling. You see the uh, interval isn't exactly clean. Alright, there's our oops, oops. there's our first bit of execution. And if we look at the event log itself We see interestingly that uh, where are we? There's the interrupt firing here. Some part of our code was called, not code we provided, uh, to actually reschedule us to say that we are to be scheduled. Other uh, things are interested in the interrupt zero, and they've been called. Interrupt exited here, and our code ran three microseconds later. And our code did the interrupt wait, the unmask, wait again, and finally terminated. So between the real start of interrupt there and our code, start of interrupt is that point, it took 12, 13 microseconds before our code executed. And our code itself took 10 microseconds. Interesting information. We've come to the end of the first video in this series. In it we saw digital output and how to have an application unblock when an interrupt occurs. So I hope you've enjoyed this little journey. The next video will show you how to have your code directly called when an interrupt occurs. Also how to trace in that interrupt code and we'll look at attaching to a real interrupt. If you want to find out more, visit qnx.com and browse the excellent documentation. If you have any ideas and suggestions for further videos, send an e email to videoname at symmetry.com.au. Thank you for your attention.